Hey everybody, this is Dr. Dost. Welcome back to my channel, Biblical Languages and Literature. Um, this is the first video in a series that's a little bit different. Um, because I find myself teaching Spanish these days, um, I figured I would kind of merge the two interests and teach Spanish through the Bible. Now, obviously in a series like this, there are going to be a lot of modern words that you're not going to encounter because if we're using the Bible to learn Spanish, we're not going to learn how to say to drive a car so much uh, because, well, there are no cars in the Bible. But nevertheless, um, working from the, the narratives of the Bible, uh, specifically using the Latin American Bible that we're going to use, so we're going to be focusing on Latin American Spanish, we are going to be able to build a very strong vocabulary base and a very strong uh, grammatical and syntactical base so that if students are learning from another resource alongside this or um, you know, after they're done with the series, if they want to uh, work from something else, they will have a strong foundation in place to build on, um, you know, to get them speaking fluently modern Spanish. So. Uh, we're, again, like I said, we're going to be focusing on Latin American Spanish, not on you know the peninsular Spanish of Spain. Please be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel, click the bell below to be notified when I publish uh, future videos in this series. Be sure to hit the like button, and I would greatly appreciate your sharing the, uh, the URL uh, with others. Share the video with others uh, to help increase viewership on the channel. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start. Uh, our first lesson is going to be from Mark 1.1, Mark 1.1. And we're going to use this very simple verse as the foundation off of which we're going to build our understanding of Spanish. Okay, And so in English, depending on what translation you're reading, Mark 1.1 is going to be the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And so the first thing I want to do is, before we even read the verse, is I want to just talk about the name of the book. So Mark in Spanish is Marcos, Marcos, Marcos. And this verse in Spanish is Principio del Evangelio de Jesucristo, el Mesías, Hijo de Dios. Principio del Evangelio de Jesucristo, el Mesías, Hijo de Dios. Now at this point, I just want to mention that we are going to be starting with reading Spanish right away, and I am not going to bother teaching the alphabet. Instead, we're going to learn the alphabet inductively. So I will talk about the letters in Spanish as needed, but the goal is to get people reading and hopefully speaking Spanish right away. Okay? So, Principio del Evangelio de Jesucristo, el Mesías, Hijo de Dios. Now, let's talk about the numbers, right? Because we have to reference the verses that we're looking at. And so we're starting with Mark 1.1. 1, 1. And so this is a great time to just introduce the first number, right? The first counting number, uno, one. And so in English, we say one. In Spanish, we're going to say uno, uno. Now, if we want to say chapter one, chapter one, We'll say capítulo uno, capítulo uno, capítulo uno, chapter one. And just as a side note, I highly recommend that as you're going through the lesson, that you're repeating everything out loud. Because again, if you want to be speaking Spanish, you can't do that silently. We learn to speak by speaking, right? We learn to speak by speaking. So just repeat everything out loud. And if I ask you a question, try to answer the question before I do. And if you need to, pause the video if you need more time to come up with the answer. Okay? So Mark chapter 1, Marcos capítulo 1, Marcos capítulo 1. Now how would we say verse 1, verse 1? And so one of the words for verse, a very commonly used word for verse, is versículo, 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 versículo uno, versículo uno. So 
Marcos capítulo 1, versículo 1, starts with the word principio, principio. And principio means beginning, beginning. Now, you'll notice that in English it's the beginning, and even if you don't know Spanish, if I'm telling you that principio means beginning, you can see that there's no word for the there. And we're not going to deal with that issue right now. That's something we'll talk about later. Okay, but for now we'll just say principio means beginning, or in this case, the beginning. Now you'll notice that principio, principio, ends with the letter O, O. And the O ending is a masculine singular ending, a masculine singular ending. So Spanish nouns will have both gender and number. By gender, we mean they are either masculine or feminine. Okay, that's gender in, in language. Words are either masculine or feminine, and don't try to make sense of it. There's nothing inherently male about the word beginning. This is just a grammatical gender, which is something different from biological gender, obviously. So principio, it ends with the O vowel, and usually when a word ends with O, not always, but usually, that word is going to be masculine. Now, nouns in Spanish also have number. And by number, we mean singular or plural. We call that category number. And so when I ask for the number of a word in Spanish, I'm asking, is it singular or plural? So the O ending is commonly a masculine singular ending in Spanish. A masculine singular ending. So if I ask you for the gender and the number of the word principio, I'm asking for the answer masculine and singular, principio, beginning. Okay, now you'll notice in this verse, principio del evangelio de Jesucristo, el Mesías, hijo de Dios, that a number of words end with the letter O in this verse. So we have principio, right over here, principio. We have evangelio, evangelio. We have Jesucristo. Notice that what we call the letter J in English, this is called J in Spanish. It makes a rough H sound, or a rough breathing. Jesucristo. Okay, and then we get the word hijo. Now, interestingly, the letter H, or as we call it in Spanish, H, H, is not pronounced. So you almost have to pretend that it's not there. Hijo, not hijo. 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 All of these words end with the O vowel, and they are masculine in gender and singular in number. Principio, meaning beginning. Evangelio, meaning gospel. Jesucristo, meaning Jesus Christ. And hijo, meaning son. Okay, so we see these four words there, principio, evangelio, Jesucristo, and hijo. You may want to be writing these in your notebook, if you have a notebook with you. But in addition to those masculine singular words, there are two more masculine singular words in this, um, in this verse, and it is Mesías, Mesías, and Dios. Dios, Mesías, Messiah. Right, which means anointed one, Messias, anointed one or Messiah, and Dios, which means God. Okay, Dios. All right, so now let's continue reading Marcos capítulo 1, versículo 1. Marcos capítulo 1, versículo 1. Principio del Evangelio de Jesucristo. El Mesías. Now, we already said that Mesías, Messiah, is a masculine singular word. It doesn't have an O vowel but at the end of it, but you just have to trust me in this case that it is. It's considered masculine. Now, the word before it, El, happens to be the masculine singular definite article. 
Now, by definite article, we're talking about the word the. The. So, in English, the word the is called the definite article. In Spanish, there are different forms of the word the. When a word is masculine singular, like Messias or Principio or Evangelio, etc., and you want to put the word the before it, you must use the form el. El. So to say the Messiah, the anointed one, el Messias. El Messias. So the Messiah is el Messias. El Messias. But if we want to say the son, well, we learned before that hijo is son. So the son would be el hijo. El hijo. How would we say the God? The God. El Dios. El Dios. Now in Mark 3.11, we see the phrase, the Son of God, the Son of God. El Hijo de Dios. The word de just means of. You can probably tell that, figure that out on your own. See, we're learning through the inductive approach. We're discovering things as we read and learning as we encounter new things. El Hijo de Dios. The Son, El Hijo, the Son, de means of, Dios means God. The God of Israel. The God of Israel. Why don't you try and take a guess at it? The God of Israel. Pause the recording if you need to, see if you can figure it out. Okay, so from the book of Genesis, Genesis or Genesis in English, you'll see that in chapter 33, verse 20. El Dios de Israel. El Dios de Israel. El Dios, the God. De means of Israel, God. El Dios de Israel. He is the Messiah, Luke 23, 35. He is the Messiah. Luke 23, 35. Es means he is. Es el Mesías. Es el Mesías. So from the book of Lucas. Lucas. All right. Now, in Mark 1, 1, we have Principio del Evangelio. Now, what is this word del? We see that the translation is of the principio del evangelio, the beginning of the gospel. So the word del means of the, of the. So one word in Spanish is two words in English. But del is just a common contraction from de, meaning of, and el, the masculine singular definite article, the word the. So de el becomes del. It's a contraction. So of the gospel, instead of being de el evangelio, it's del evangelio. Del evangelio. Okay? And that's just a contraction of those words. Okay? If we wanted to say of the son, instead of saying de el hijo, de el hijo, it becomes del hijo. Del hijo. Del hijo. Of the Messiah. Of the Messiah would, instead of being de el Messias, de el Messias, it becomes del Messias. Del Messias. All right, so Mark 1 1 or Marcos capítulo 1, versículo 1, principio del Evangelio of the Gospel de Jesucristo. Uh, sorry, de Jesucristo, of Jesus Christ, el Mesías, the Messiah, hijo de Dios, son of God. Principio del Evangelio de Jesucristo, el Mesías, hijo de Dios. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the son of God. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me and be sure to look for the next video in which we'll build on everything we learned today. All right, take care, everybody.